Okay, so we know Matilda is a bit of an icon here. She's been back for the last few little weeks. She's living in my shed over here. But I need to get in there this year because I'm doing yard work. And I don't want her to have her babies in there. And she's had them in there once before. But she's seen me come out into the yard. And she's scooting around me. So that tells me she wants some food. Where are you, Matilda? Hmm? Get her some water. They like their food with water. Oh, there you are. There you are. What you doing? Huh? What are you doing, Matilda? Okay, I can't see nothing in this camera, people. So I'm assuming you can see her. See, she'll come up and she'll try and touch my foot. Hmm? You gonna try and touch my foot? Huh? You know, eh? You can't wait. You're hungry, huh? Ah. I'm going to try and give you some water with this. Because they like water. So I'll have to rinse this out. Yucky, yucky. There you are. Is he getting more and more friendly? My, that's my little dog, people. Matilda's my dog. Yeah, she's my dog. Hmm? I wish I could see in this lens. But when J Jude was using it, he couldn't even see in it. can't see nothing. I don't know what's wrong with this camera. It's not showing anything. Is this camera even on? I don't even know if it's on. Wasting time. Oh my god. No, oh, I don't know. Is it on? Yeah. Do these rabbits give them some, give them some stuff? Matilda, you gonna keep me company? Yeah. I'm assuming that you can see her. I can't see nothing. There's something wrong with this camera. Paid good money and didn't even last a year. No. Hold on. There, Matilda. I gave her some water. I can kind of see the bull. Hey, Matilda. I have to get a different camera for outside. Can't see nothing in this screen. Yeah. I can only guesstimate. Yeah. Now, mind you, my eyes are bad. Actually, I was going to try those, those glasses. See if I can wear those glasses outside that I got. If I can't wear them outside, then I'll never use them. Because I can't wear them in the house. No. It's impossible. So. And then we've got our little bunnies over here. Are you waiting for something? Are you waiting for something? Where's my finger here? Hmm? Hey, pumpkin. You want some dandelions? And then we've got Snow Puff over there. I think that's the one. That's his name. Snow Puff. We've got pumpkin and Snow Puff. They're doing really well with each other. They love each other very, very much. And you want water, huh? Hold on. Okay, I'm going to finish this video. Clearly, I've got people playing games with me. What's new on YouTube, right? But I guess that's the price you pay when you work on a foundation and you put yourself out in the public and you talk about real life and real, real issues and real experiences and real people and real situation and real consequences and... Just the whole nine yards, right? Okay. So anyway, this was my last video. Trying to get caught up with paperwork May 8th, 2022. Alright? And then I got this, this, uh, it's, it says, you winder gill. About a, an hour ago from when I had this browser open, okay? And this is what this individual wrote. Alright? You know, if you notice, I've got a lot of browsers up, okay? Anyway, we'll just read it. Hi, Judy. You might not know me. 
well, how would I know you, but besides that point, but I'm one of Mrs. Gill's nephews. You might want to call me a pit bull. Well, better a poodle, okay? Be grateful you didn't get called a fucking poodle here, okay? Anyway, but I'm looking after my auntie, okay? Well, as far as I know, my landlady is 82 years old, lives in a monster home with her husband, okay, Mr. Gill, right? And they have several houses that they own, so they just sold one two years, less than two years ago, right? They did all kinds of stuff. There's a long history with them, but besides that point, right, they're in a situation where they're basically doing fine. So I don't know how you're looking after them in a physical sense. Maybe in a supportive sense, I could see, but I know physically you're not looking after them because they basically look after themselves, right? Mr. Gill has health problems with his heart and stuff, so, you know. But Mrs. Gill, she's a little whippersnapper outside of getting these inoculations and then making her sick ever since, okay? Like, almost every time I see her, she's sick. But she insists that it has nothing to do with the inoculations, although I tend to disagree. But she's still weathering the storm. She flew off to India with Mr. Gill just two months ago when... I was in the dark for the duration of their departure because, you know, I couldn't phone my landlady. Eventually, Tisha just said to heck, Mom, you can't keep being in the kitchen in the dark. I'll just pay for it. And, you know, I said, well, that's, I'll just talk to the landlord when she gets back. And the thing costed $350, and I gave her two, and we called it Even Steven only because this light issue has been an issue for a while now and it was just time to move on. Okay, and then she told me she's not fixing underneath the bath, uh, the kitchen sink because she's selling the house. Fine, what am I gonna do? Argue? It's been six months, I'm still waiting, people. I'm waiting for Alex or I'm waiting for my landlady. Both of them are busy. I guess that's just a part of growing old. You end up getting stuck with things with no help. And then people come and bitch on you after the fact at some point or another because of that initial problem, which is the sink underneath the sink and the kitchen leaks all over the place. One backs up, it needs to be repaired. But besides that point, let's focus. And I want, and I was told that when first when you first moved into the house that you and my auntie well first of all I was dealing with Mr. Gill before I was dealing with Mrs. Gill Mrs. Gill didn't take on a strong role in terms of being quote unquote the landlord until Mr. Gill's heart condition became more serious because he had to go for heart surgery and all that stuff. And his doctor was advising him no stress. So the burden of that went on to Mrs. Gill, although Mrs. Gill has always been the bookkeeper. That's what Mr. Gill told me, right? But the deal was cut between me and Mr. Gill with Mrs. Gill standing there with Joan and John, okay? My conversation was, was, was with Mr. Gill, more so than Mrs. Gill, although I've been dealing with Mrs. Gill for years and years with rent, and I don't want to say looking after her, but when she likes to climb up on a barrel to go grab plums, right, because she's just, you know, a 78-year-old spring chicken, I stand there and I, I keep my hands close by just in case she falls, and before I let her hit the ground, I would take the hit, okay? So we can both say that we look after your auntie. You just do it in a different way. All right? Okay. That's my relationship with Mrs. Gill. You want something, you want, to, you want a squash, you want a pumpkin, 
you want grapes, you want tomatoes, you want whatever it was that I was growing all these years, I always let her go in there and just be happy and get what she want and leave with her bounty. Okay? Those are the memories I'd like to walk away with when I leave this house. The good, the good old days. You know, there is such a thing as called the good old days, right? The only thing is, is the good old days are being ripped up from underneath the feet in terms of that carpet. <laughs> All right. But let's focus on what you have to say, assuming that you're even a relative to my landlords, because as far as I know, you could be Julian's sister coming in with another fake user account, because this post of yours has been deleted by this individual who posted it. But I copied and pasted it and reposted it because I had a sneaky feeling that that would happen, right? Because of the bullshit that goes on with YouTube. But besides that point, and I was told that when you first moved into, okay, the house, that you and my auntie had an understanding that she would never raise the rent. No, that understanding was not with Mrs. Gill. The offer was move into the house, take it now. If you take it now, we'll never raise the rent. Stay as long as you want. Okay? If you leave and then think you can come back later after you looked at another house and said, you know, you didn't like and you come back to me as Mr. Gill, right? The landlord, and you want to rent this house to us, like to you, right? Mr. and Mrs. Gill that rented to me the second time around because, you know, they, they can't guarantee that whoever came after me, they wouldn't have given them a house. So I had to choose right then and there. And I looked at John. Joan was there. And we took the house. And then I moved my family in, went through all that kahuffle, blah, blah, blah. And then spring came, and then I moved into the yard, and I basically lived in my yard for 11 fucking years, okay? Well, I took one year off last year, kind of, because of the food, because I was thinking of paying rent to my landlord, no matter how messed up the economy was going to go because of the provincial government and the federal government and the global government, to which the Punjabis are benefiting from. Okay, and as a community activist that's been working on a foundation for years and years and years and years and years fighting for justice so that p people can have peace and prosperity in their life, why the frick hell, why the boo-boo hell would I want to drop the ball now? I wouldn't. Okay? So that's why I'm doing this video. But I'm suspicious. Because this individual has already removed their post. It's like poking the bear, right? Uh, but you had to keep up the maintenance of the house. No, there was never an agreement like that. As if I could afford to do the roof. As if I could afford to chase, change a water fucking tank when it broke. As if I could repair a furnace if it broke, which it hasn't, thank God. Touch wood. Okay? As, as if I could, you know, replace broken pipes that were broken before I even moved in. Right? That was, that, right? Right? I did take on the porch only because I had no choice. Right? They t I was told that it was a porch... You don't go outside, use the porch only in the summertime. Who to heck with it? We're not fixing the porch. So I have been maintaining. My landlords have never put not one penny into the porch outside. At one point, Mr. Guild and Mrs. Guild did give me $300, I think, off of the total cost of trying to replace that stupid plastic up on top, which was pointless because that was just really shoddy material and never again because it was a waste of money on everybody's part and a waste of time. But since then, I've been trying to piece in what old, old, that stuff that sits on porches that's clear. You know, I got videos of me piecing that in to try and prevent the leaking. 
my son and I, we just ran some metal siding that I got from the little house when they tore down the little house to make a makeshift gutter so that this, the, the water wouldn't drip onto the stairs as I'm going downstairs into the basement and then pooling up by the fucking basement door and rotting out the cement. So my son and I, we rigged up something. Didn't cost my landlady nothing, okay? And there still needs to be gutter and shit and whatever, okay? It's just, like, just bullshit. Just poking the bear here, people. It pisses me off. You don't know. But you had to keep up with the maintenance of the house and the land. I've done my... I, I put in 11 years. I've been in this house 12 years. You can say 10 years hardcore. 10 years hardcore in, into this. I lived in my yard, okay? That was my fucking living space. I was in the yard for 10 to 12 hours a day. Every day, four to five days a week. And there was a period of time where I was out in the yard every day with the whip on my back because of keeping up with the, right? Because, you know, who wants to live with mud, weeds, grit, sand, gravel rocks, right? And raccoon shit, right? And cat shit. Because in the front it was nothing but sand. Half, half, half of the half of the yard was just full of sand, and under the sand was gravel rocks. Now I've got the one pond out there, and I'm working on that big pond. But with things going on the way they're going on, like I don't know, people, like <laughs> it's like three quarters done now after all this time. I'd like to finish it just to see what it looks like. You know, have it for a little while anyway. You know, but I don't know. Anyway, mm, but hold on. My auntie kept her side of the bargain and never raised the rent. But you had to maintain the house and land in good order. But instead, you destroyed the house. I don't know how I did that because I don't think so, right? It's just been general maintenance. I've been waiting for 10 to uh, 12 years to have this back door changed in terms of when they changed the windows, they never changed that sliding door. It was broken when I moved in and it's extremely dangerous and I'm waiting for, I've been waiting, I've been asking, right? And now, you know, it will probably never get fixed and you know, that has nothing to do with me because it was like that when I moved in. It's just gotten worse over the years, right? As for wood rot out in the porch, well, that porch was old when I moved in. I put it at 20 years here when I made a comment back, but it's probably more like 30 fucking years old because whatever they did, they just took plywood, put it over the freaking planks that were there prior, and those planks were flaking off even before I moved in because they had that fucking, oops, sorry, that 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 boo-boo that plastic all stapled up there to catch the freaking rotten wood as it was flaking off, right? Right? And I'm, okay, now I'm up climbing a freaking ladder trying to cover up that shit, hammering with that shit falling in my fucking eyes, okay, okay. I'm serious, I need to put that up on my freaking playlist. Like, people just, mm, people, I know how people work, man, you know? But instead, you destroyed the house and the land. So now, so now, the family is begging my auntie and uncle to sell. Let me tell you something. I spoke to Mr. Gill. Okay? When he came to get Mr. Lace, my rooster. Because I trusted Mr. Gill to take my rooster to a farm where he would be safe. And Mr. Gill really loves chickens. And Mr. Rooster was a real, uh, Mr. Lace was a real cool bird. So anyway, when he came to get Mr. Lace to take him to the farms. He told me, he told me that his family sits at the table and pesters to sell this house. Not because of me, people, but to sell this house. Because there's money 
in this property because of where it's located up by the SkyTrain and this whole area is designated for commercial purposes in terms of building high-rise condos so, so I guess at some point the government can this is now this is from the pit bull over there right where that woman got evicted he was saying that what could happen in the future is I guess the Fed government would lower the interest rates and because if they do that it's going to open up the market for renters who've been renting to start buying because it becomes more affordable to buy the house then right so if you got a whole bunch of renters stuck in a renting position right now and they can't afford to buy the house but they want to if the government lowers the rate then all of a sudden all these renters want to start buying and then um, the demand for houses becomes even stronger right which poses a problem for the economy I, I haven't quite figured it out because I, I I never had a chance to get involved with the wheelings and dealings of housing right anyway I'm tired. I was out in the yard for just a little bit, okay? I tried those glasses, and no, it didn't work. <laughs> anyway, but instead, you destroyed the house and the land. So now, the family is begging my auntie and uncle to sell, because I destroyed the house, and I destroyed the land, so they want to get rid of it that's what this individual is trying to say that house because they're ashamed to look at that place sorry it's my eyes and now we know we have to tear this place down because of you now do you honestly think this is one of my landlord's relatives or do you think it's Julian's sister? Or maybe one of Julian's sister's friends? What do you think? Hmm? It's a toss-up. It's a toss-up, okay? Well, here's my response. That is not true. Rent was 1500 when I moved in, and now it's 1950. And the yard was nothing but mud, grit, weeds, full of morning glory, 50 bags full in one day of pulling it when spring comes and it started to grow. Oh my God, my eyes are freaking out. And then it kept growing until winter with more bags full, not to mention half a yard in the front full of nothing but sand and gravel rocks under it with more weeds and morning glory. I didn't write down the cat shit in the, that one big fucking litter box. Sorry, one big boo-boo litter box in the front yard because it was all sand, half a yard, right? So it was just perfect for cats, right? And then, of course, the morning glory liked to travel through it because, you know, it, it would grow six inches a night. My yard used to shift because of the morning glory going through the freaking dirt. It was hard, people. I worked really hard, man. You don't know. Okay? Uh, not to mention half a yard in the front full of nothing but sand and gravel rocks under it with more weeds and morning glory. I've given up 11 years in this yard, 10 of them hardcore, okay, because we can't really count last year. Because I put food first, rent first, then yard this year, basically. Right? That was my reasoning. <laughs> food, rent, and then finish up the yard this year. Uh, under it with more weeds and morning glory. I've given up 11 years in the yard that had nothing but weeds, mud, grit, sand, and rocks. And nobody once ever helped me to even cut grass. 
sorry. Now it has four sheds, two greenhouses, a hen house if needed because of the economy, right? Uh, places to grow actual food because the land has been tilled. Walkways, which I'm working on clearing out and like I said, I'm finishing up the yard this year. Finish up that pond area, right? And get everything right. I got wood to do whatever, and then, and then, and then it's done. Because I won't be in the kitchen like it was last year, people. Flowers and other food that grows. And this year, I'm finishing up with everything because last year. I put here do but did food prep so I could pay rent it's my eyes people without worrying about the high cost of food due to the corruption going on in society and the economy it's been extremely cold outside wet and dismal so I am sorry I haven't been outside like the good old days when that when that whip was on my back being I've lost three family members to the corruption in this province and I'm now with and I'm now left with a disabled grandchild who was injured at birth for nefarious reasons. I'm having a really hard time reading this. Okay. Then I wrote, and I will be doing porch repairs. Right? We know what kind of porch repairs I'll be doing. Right? Very soon. It's just been very cold, wet, very dark and gray and cold. It's mostly cold, right? It's been very, very cold. Only a few days that were warm. But if I'm having to put Amari on the toilet, people, because it's that time, I can't just ignore that. I have to put him on the toilet and let nature take, take its course. And, you know, it's an off and on thing sometimes all day. So, you know, I have to choose between going out in the yard or having Amari sit on the toilet and pay attention and you know do whatever I'm doing with for that around that reason which can pretty much take all day sometimes right you know versus having him back up on me and who knows people like it's not that simple <laughs> like I don't I don't this, these people think it's a fucking joke I'm not going to get upset because obviously this person wants me to get upset. And for all we know, it could be Julian's sister. Just whatever. Right? And she enjoys this kind of shit. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past her. Uh, I already said that one, right? Cold. Okay. And I will be doing porch repairs to the best of my ability, being that porch is 20 years old. That porch is older than 20 years old, people. That thing was rotting out before I even moved in, okay? And the plastic was covering up what was rotting underneath what they hammered over it. Okay, but it's still functional, right? So, you know, I think for 12 years... My landlady's never invested a dime into that porch, never did any fence repairs. Any fence repairs that had to be done were all done by me. Okay, any porch repairs outside of that $300 for that crappy freaking clear stuff that's supposed to, you know, the, the old school stuff was good. The new stuff that they sell no more is not worth paying for. Outside of that, they've never spent a dime on that porch, okay? And any porch repairs that are going to happen 
are going to be happening by me this year, and I have wood for it. I it's just it's been too cold. Plus, I need my son to help carry the wood and help me place it, and you know, before I can hammer it on. I'm not strong enough to move fucking plywood by myself. But I have some wood still, which I plan on using up this year. Although I'm not sure how I'm going to use the skill saw. But I could always get my son to skill saw it for me pre in advance. Have it all measured out. Show him what I want done. Boom, 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 boom. It's done. And then I can go about my business and finish just building what needs to be. Like, finish it. Just finish it. Whether I'm putting up the vinyl siding on Mr. Lace's um, cat house, hen house, or whether I'm running vinyl siding along a garden bed. I, I mean, we all know it's all being torn down. So, you know, like, seriously, why am I doing it? <laughs> right? Outside of, if I don't, I get criticized and being accused that I'm the one that's destroying the fucking neighborhood here. Okay, I'm the one that's destroying the neighborhood who deserves to be treated like a fucking attic. Okay? And then when you get tossed out, they won't ask you where you went and how you're doing. Okay? But I have some wood still, so I'll be using that once the weather warms up because I don't want to get sick which I'm starting to feel because of all this stress. I mean, I'm already overworked, right? You know, but by pushing myself too hard, okay, in the cold, that's a big one, sorry, right? As it's hard enough as it is, right? So, I, like I said, I, I have a plan. I'm going to pace myself through it, right? That's what I'm thinking, just pace myself through it, and by the end of the summer, whatever's not done in turn well, like whatever, whatever's done, it will be done. But what if whatever's left behind in terms of miscellaneous, whatever, you know, then we'll talk about the, the big haul in terms of like. I could probably take some of this vinyl if I wanted to. To the bin that's over there. And just chuck it all out and not waste my time putting it up around the yard to try and make the yard look nice. Considering what people think of me. Right? Short term, long term, whatever fucking term. When in fact, they could have sold this house years ago. Right? That's, that's the thing. They, they were bothering my landlord. My landlord, Mr. Gill. Not Mrs. Gill. They were bothering Mr. Gill to sell the fucking house. Okay? To make money so they go buy more houses because that's what they do, right? It just makes more down payment for another house, right? Not only do they get a $500,000 down payment for another house, but they also get fucking profit and their money that they invested into it minus their mortgage fees, okay? And you flip them like pancakes. That's why it's called Monopoly, right? The more houses you own on a, own on a block, the, you know, the bigger and badder you get, right? And I guess when you're in that situation, you got to know when to fold your hand, <laughs> when to play your hand. So, you know, right? Okay. Anyway. Uh, well, let's just read. Also, also, I spoke to another neighbor. Okay. This was today, people. And I was informed that this whole block has had an application, okay, an application put in for towards the city now. Apparently there's an application in front of the city, okay, to tear down all the houses, uh, four, five, six, about seven houses that I'm aware of right now, okay. We'll just say between four to seven houses that I'm aware of right now at one time after it's proved through the city to start building in a fucking high-rise condo, okay? Has had an application put forward to rip it up 
of every house on the block to build a high-rise condo. And that neighbor is facing homelessness when they get evicted, because that's what's going to happen, to that process as it unfolds while nothing in their place gets fixed while they continue to live there. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? That's what that that's what Twinder was doing at the little house. He didn't want to fix nothing because he knew he was tearing it down. And he just said no. But he let the people live there who were homeless because they were on in tents in the middle of the winter living on the strip. So considering the two choices, they were grateful to have the house, right, in terms of a roof over their head, even if it was only for nine months, right? But at the end of the day, the landlord was negligent for, for having those people live in fucking shitty, sh in a shitty fucking bathroom with the toilet overflowing all the time because of the pipes and the bathtub backing up. And I, I, I like, I myself felt really, really bad for them because I was helpless to do anything about it. Right? Anyway, now other people on the block are facing the same thing, even though they've been living in their fucking places for 20 years. But they're being forced out now. Because don't forget, we've got another one over there where those four houses all sold at one time, being evicted from her, her home at any moment, and she's been there for 23 years. And she keeps her yard immaculate. Okay? I asked her, when do you find time to come out here and do what you do? <laughs> I never see you out in your yard, but every time I walk by, right? But she's facing homelessness too. I asked her, have you found anything to even think about moving into that you can afford? She said no. And she's in her 70s. And this other neighbor over here, they're, they're like pushing between 50 and 60s, right? right? I think the man is a little older than the woman, right? And that's just two neighbors being evicted, okay? The whole block, all the way down, four to seven houses will be all wiped out at one fucking time with all the trees, all the animals, everything. All the people who own pets will be displaced and won't be able to find a place that rents to pets, okay? Like, this is serious, Okay? <sighs> Evicted to the process as it unfolds while nothing in their place gets fixed while they continue to live there. So they're respectable human beings pre being treated like addicts before they demolition the house. I already been through that scenario with that little house that I had, people. Okay? By the way, did you hear about the dead body parts being spread around the area? Body parts scattered around up by the Sky Train, which is what, 300 feet, 400 feet away from me? Up like by the ravine and shit? Okay. The one where they found that woman, that native woman, with her eyes gouged out and everybody thought it was Sierra down there. That was in 2018, because that's when I had the little house. I'm pretty sure it was 2018. No, Shemay was alive. Shemay died in 18. Yeah, Shemay died in 18. I got the house in December of 2000. I'm pretty sure it was December of 2017. I got it basically for Sierra, but of course Sierra was homeless. So, you know, I said, Sierra, okay, here's a house. You got it at least for nine months. You know, who, who, out of all these tents, who, you know, who, who should move in? A bunch of people came forward, started the process, blah, 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 blah. It ended up being a fucking mutiny. But the whole time, the landlord, at the end of the day, was wrong for what he did by having those people live in fucking squalor while he knew he was going to make money just by the fact of kicking them out and building another monster home, live in it for a year or two, and then flip it at a fucking profit. Okay? It's 
so he can go do it again. Because he said that's what he does. To eventually one day he just won't have to do that anymore and he'll be nicely set and secure with his life. Because that's how they make money. So scattered around the Sky Train, which is not too far from me, and some more scattered around on the other side of King George, which is down there somewhere, not too far from me, with those body parts coming from the same person. Okay? I said, oh my God, really? Well, now, we, there you go. We've got somebody running around with body parts in their fucking backpack or in their trunk, and they're just throwing them around Surrey, up in the Wally area, okay? As, as these property developers are pushing out more people into homelessness. Well, they accuse you of destroying the property. Okay? And then another person came in after my responses that I posted. Okay? And that Rawinder he that that individual opened that up, that account up today. This account was opened up in April, but the one that I just post I read, right, was opened up today. So they specifically start, opened up an, a, a YouTube account, whether it's a secondary account or, or a first account, whatever, just to make a comment on my page. And then they ended up deleting their comment, but I copied and pasted it and pasted it onto my page, onto my video page, right? Plus, I just showed you the original, because I have more than one, I have more than one browser open. See? I have more than one browser open. Okay, but I copied and pasted, you can see, see, because I had a sneaky feeling that that's what would happen, they'd, right, get me to respond, you know, put fear into me, scare me, do whatever to me, try and gaslight me, try and blame me for something that is much more complicated than that, that's for sure, and, uh, and then just remove, remove, uh, anyway, you can see, I just did a copy and paste, right? The questions, the comments, whatever this individual was saying, and then my response, right? And then I added in this Abby, who came in 30 minutes later, Right here. Where is it? It's my eyes, people. Come on. There we go. Okay. Right here. See? Hey, Judy. I heard about what's going on with your landlord. I googled your address, and it says your house is for sale can they do this and then I came in and I said from my understanding an application to tear up the whole block and demolition all the houses cut down all the trees scare off or kill off all the wildlife and domestic pets evict all the tenants from house to house except for the immigrants who will be relocated into new housing because of those subsidized programs has already been applied for and that is why it's my eyes people I can barely see this all the Hummers and likewise vehicles are around okay so yes my landlady will get her two million dollars when she sells anyway let's see 
See, here's that. Here's that person. You can see. Right? Oh, look. Look at that. See? Do you see the game playing? This channel does not exist. All right. But I just showed you that it did. You see? It's right there. And I went as far as when I posted through copy and paste, you can see Do you see? I copied and pasted their status. And I just showed you the status. And when we went to go to the about to see when the account was made, it now says it's deleted. It does not longer, it, it, it no longer exists. So clearly, they're playing games. Okay? Right? And then... Well, I read the response there, right? So, let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Um, see, I copied and pasted. Copied and pasted, but they deleted their comments. Their comment. This individual deleted their comment. Because if I refresh the browser, you're going to find that it's not there, right? It was... But you can see they're not showing on this page. Okay, but you've seen them in my comments. At some point, they were on the page, but... Because we're dealing with gang stalkers here. Of some sorts. See? Here we go. See, it's showing right here. Because I have different browsers. The browsers hold whatever is on the page. As soon as you close the page and try and refresh the page, this person does no longer exist. we just seen that. Right? It was cancelled. you just seen me go through that. Okay? Now, this was done more than 27 minutes ago, right, because I haven't refreshed the page. But they removed it because when I was going and just doing whatever, I noticed that it wasn't there. And But, you know, this is something Julian's sister would do. Although, I know that Mr. Gill's family puts a lot of pressure on him to sell. And of course they try and blame me for it as if I get anything out of it. They're the ones that are all going to benefit from it because once two million dollars comes in you don't think they're not going to be standing around saying where's my share? <laughs> right? But I suppose they're all doing good, so they wouldn't need that. So what would it matter, right? Outside of, that's just more money for my landlord to, I don't know, do whatever they do, right? I don't want to get snide. So here. Okay, so this is what's showing here right now. On this page, I don't know when this was posted so you see I pretty much copied and pasted it right you can see this individual did it two minutes ago for some reason I managed to snag in whatever I read it I got mm -hmm, okay I copied and pasted you can see I posted it you know I responded obviously who knows what they're thinking and even then I don't have I don't um don't know if all all the I don't even have I don't even have all my answers in this because this was one of the original pages right because I have like three different pages up here 
So here, let's refresh this page and see what happens. I don't got enough fucking mobs around me, right? Uh oh, so, don't got enough boo boo mobs around I'm me. Like, okay. Don't got enough boo 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 mobs. <laughs> right? So here's my copy and paste of this individual who deleted their post as well, which makes me think it's the same person using multiple fake user accounts. Right? Because this this one was only uh, set up in in April of this year. And just as fast as they posted, they also deleted this post because it's not you're gonna find that this person's post doesn't come up. But I already showed it to you in my comments, right? Because uh, they deleted it completely. And not only did they delete it, but this individual opened up account just to come in and say something, and then turn around and deleted the the account completely after they read what I wrote. Okay. So, what, troll? Troll? Yeah, not there. Because they deleted it. And that's why I do this stuff sometimes, people. Right? Okay. So every post that I posted on that person's thread, I reposted it on this as a copy and paste. And then I added in what came in 20 minutes, half an hour later, as I was answering back this individual probably the same person came in and posted whatever I answered and then they deleted their post right so that's what's going on <laughs>